Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I'm Papa Boris, and in this video, I'm going to play against the Easy AI in the Through the Ages app, which, again, is an amazing app. Just to illustrate some very, very basic rules of thumb if you are new to the game and want to get some basic stuff. If you want to see me play, like, you know, on try-hard mode, I will do a later video against the harder AI, and maybe, if my life allows it, I'd like to play against some actual human beings and multiplayer. Uh, and in those games, I'll be trying to play my absolute very best for however little that may be. In this game, you're not going to see any super advanced strategy or anything. I just want to illustrate some very, very basic things. So we're going to go ahead and drop the AI down to easy. The training AI actually like uh, cheats in your favor. Like it's really, really gimped. Um, so I'm not going to give them the handicap. This is all mechanically equivalent to a human being. They're just going to play very, very badly. I am going to use tabletop rules for this, but please note that uh, if you watch my games against human players, I will be playing with the digital rules, and I'll explain what those are when we get there. But for now, let's go ahead and switch to tabletop. Card set, let's go to the base game, and let's play. Okay, so again, these are rules of thumb. Rules of thumb means that sometimes it is correct to break them. Please note that this is just as a meant as like a guiding post if you are struggling to do well in the game and just want a little bit of help. So in age A, it's not a bad idea to try to get a leader and a wonder because the leaders and wonders are much better cards than the yellow cards. The yellow cards basically just give you like a rock or a food or like a science or something. And they're not that great. Whereas the wonders and the leaders can have either a lasting impact in the case of the wonders or uh, just at least like a better impact in the short term than simply uh, taking a yellow card. So in this case where I've been offered four yellow cards and a wonder as the first player, I'm going to put the wonder under construction. And all four wonders in age A are good, especially if you're playing with the updated cards. Um, they're all great. If you're not, the Hanging Gardens and Colossus are not quite as good, but they're still good. They're still better than not building a wonder at all if you're going just by rules of thumb. So my one civil action, I'm going to put the Hanging Wonders under construction. Okay, Easy AI decides to take a leader, which is a pretty good play. That's what I would have done too, so way to go, Easy AI. I would have taken him Hammurabi if the AI hadn't. Okay, so up next, let's talk about some basic card row strategy. If you're playing a two-player game, and a three-player game too, but uh, for a two-player game especially, this spot right here is kind of like the bitch spot. This spot, if you don't take the thing now, it's going to disappear by the time it gets to be your ter next turn. But here it costs, well, if this were not a wonder, it costs two civil actions instead of one. In addition, if you take any cards that are not from the auto-remove slots, then you increase by one the field of view from which a card will be eliminated. What I mean by that is, let's say I want Homer. I know that Green can't take Homer because he already took an AJ leader. But if I were to take this Urban Growth, Homer would disappear because what would happen is these three cards would go and the next two cards would be Colossus, Pyramids, and Homer, and he would automatically disappear. So in this case, as I build a mine, which is a rule of thumb, good thing to do on your first turn, and raise my population, I've got two actions left, and I'm like, hmm, what do I do with those actions? I mean, I could take urban growth and, like, patriotism just to take some cards, but if I take urban growth, I lose Homer, so I have to be okay with getting Moses or Alexander the Great, which are also fine leaders. There's really no bad leaders. Um, so here I'm like, you know what? I could take Engineering Genius for two. It's one of my favorite cards from AJ because it gives you two rocks instead of one, and it helps you build a wonder, which you're usually doing, but I'm actually going to be like, no, I don't need Homer. He gives a happy face. Hanging Gardens gives two happy faces. So we'll just let him die. I'll take the Urban Growth. And I'm not planning to build any more mines or farms. So we'll take the Patriotism on top of that and call it a day. Okay, let's see if the easy AI grabs the Engineering Genius. Oftentimes the AI does not take Engineering Genius. We'll see if he does or not. He's increasing population, building a mine. Good. Taking stockpile and... He did not use Hammurabi's ability to use a military action as a civil action. That's definitely bad play. Okay, cool. So uh, for politics, good rule of thumb. Um, try not to play events if you don't have a ready worker because there's an event that lets you make a free temple, which is a three rock value and just a handy thing to have in general. So you don't really want to forego that opportunity if you don't have some event you're very excited about. And a good rule of thumb as well is it's better to not play events than to play them. And this may seem a little bit odd, but basically, like, when in doubt, don't play the event. Like, if you're not sure, like, hmm, maybe in the future I might have some discontent workers, like, don't play this event. 
or like maybe in the future I am gonna be behind on strength and it's some devastating thing, don't play the event. One thing I've seen a lot is people just screwing themselves over horribly. So honestly, if you want to, just never play any events. It's a tricky thing because as a new player, when you see these things that are playable, they give you points, they flip up cards, which give you free resources, blah, blah, blah. It may seem very exciting to do that, but it's surprisingly like okay to just never play events, especially if you're gonna be behind on strength. Here, I am thinking, okay, I got Hanging Gardens, I got two happy faces, so maybe the Rebellion's not that bad. I'm probably going to finish this before the event happens, so let's see if we can screw over Hammurabi with it. Okay, two food. Fantastic. All right, let's go ahead and play the Urban Growth. Good rule of thumb for turn two, build a second lab, because science is a big deal, and getting more of it is really good. I'm going to raise in population. It is tempting to delay raising population so you get more food by delaying uh, how soon this thing appears. My advice is don't diddle around with it, just just raise it. Um, here, it's a bit tricky because by raising the population, I'm stopping myself from being able to play the leader, but I'm okay with that. So we'll just take Engineering Genius and the leader, and we'll play him in the future. His ability is not an immediate thing I would use anyways. Okay, so once you've d followed the script for turns one and turns two, where you've turn one, built another mine, and turn two, built a second lab, it can feel a little bit overwhelming, you know, what to do with your actions and what to do with your turns. So a good thing to keep in mind is, like, which technology cards from age one are good. I'm not going to, like, talk too much about the stuff in age two and three, um, but from age one, some important... I'm not saying you should always get these, but some important cards are the following... Alchemy. Alchemy is very good because it allows you to upgrade your philosophy labs to make more science. And you don't need to spend any additional workers for it. Printing press also gives you more science because each printing press is one science instead of zero, whereas each alchemy lab is, is, uh, one, is two science instead of one. So either way, you're gaining one science for the same rock cost. It costs as much to upgrade a lab from philosophy to alchemy as it does to build a new printing press. But because the printing press costs a worker, it is generally, I'm not saying always, but just in general, substantially worse than alchemy. Another important urban card is, I'm just joking, that's pretty much the only really important urban card is alchemy. Everything else, sometimes a good thing to get. Otherwise, if you don't get them, it's usually not a big deal. The production cards are both very important to keep an eye on because getting better food production and getting better rock production is, I mean, pretty good. And if in a two-player game especially, there's only one each of the production cards. So if it comes out at the wrong time and you're counting on it to raise your production, you can really get into a hole. Like, you cannot just increase your production, your population at all on your basic farms. It just can't happen. Irrigation is okay at keeping you in the game. Selective breeding is very good, but selective breeding, there's only one of it in a two-player game. So putting all your pins on it can lead to disaster depending on its placement in the deck. So that makes irrigation and iron important cards to look at. Knights and Swordsmen are both very important cards because if you get these, then you can satisfy any age two tactics and prevent yourself from falling behind on strength, which would allow you to get whomped. Oh man, I love that in this video, I'm realizing I forgot so many things. I forgot to talk about wars. I also forgot to talk about the increased cost of wonders. Oops, we'll have to add some stuff to the description field of that video. And then as for the blue ones, um, they're all like kind of nice. They get substantially better in age two. Like they're all really good in age two. Age one, yeah, obviously a civil action is good, but that's a lot of science. And then everything else is just kind of okay. Like cartography can be good if you get a bunch of colonies and so on. Um, but I wouldn't worry necessarily that much about these. The ones to keep your eye on, and then everything else is kind of secondary, would be the two production cards, alchemy, and the two military cards. Again, just as like a rule of thumb. Okay, so in this case, for myself, I could take knights and prevent Hammurabi from getting knights. I do have a tactics card for knights. So... There's a temptation to grab it now while I can. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm not going to go for colonizing. We'll just skip the politics phase. Let's play the leader. Um, raising population. And nothing here seems that amazing. So we'll let the knights go. They're not in the bitch spot. Maybe Hammurabi won't take them. Let's just go ahead and build a couple stages of the wonder. I'm going to use my rocks instead of the card. So I can put as many rocks back in here as possible. And I will have to discard a card. So I'm okay with that. I'm going to do it. If there was something I really wanted to save, 
then I would actually play this tactic, even though I don't have it fulfilled yet, just to get it played. In general, you don't want to play tactics until you absolutely need to, because it won't, for the first turn that you play them, they are yours and yours alone. But um, once they've been in the round, uh, once you've had a round with them, they become public, and you, you know, lose exclusive rights to them. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just um, see this thing. I'm going to use it now, even though I can't actually make that worker right now, because uh, maybe I'll go to an event I want to play later. I don't, I don't want to um, use like this at a time when I could have played a better event. So we'll just go ahead and pop it right now. I'm going to go ahead and grab the knights, build hanging gardens, and also take St. Peter's. So I forgot to mention this, but wonders cost an additional civil action to take for every previous wonder you've built. That's a really, really important rule because that makes it harder to just go for all wonders. Uh, St. Peter's is a really good wonder. As far as cards in age one go, like in the wonder and leader front, the leaders are all fine. They're all kind of specialized. There's not like any one really generically good leader, but uh, as far as wonders go, the two main ones are the university because it makes two science. And then the St. Peter's Basilica. This is a really fantastic wonder, even in its nerfed form. It used to be 4-4, four, four, only, only two stages. Now it's 1-6-1, one, one, which is three stages. Uh, because it gives a happy face by itself. It makes anything else that makes happy face produce happy faces, which means that your temples can now make two happy faces each, even at age A. So it means you don't need basically like any other technology card at all during the entire game. Your happy face problem is just solved with St. Peter's. Plus two culture per, two per turn is, you know, pretty good at this point. It's going to be a lot of culture in the long run. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and actually play the tactic now because I have to discard down to two and I want to keep... Oops, hang on, let me actually make a warrior to use up some rocks to not be corrupt. And yeah, now I'm going to discard this colony. I want to keep the defense cards. That way, if Hammurabi does get ahead of me on strength, I can block them. And if colonies show up, I can potentially at least make them bid higher for those colonies. Okay, this is like an event that gives you a free civil action to build something or develop a technology, paying one fewer resource. Um, let's see. I think I'm just going to keep it safe here. I don't know if I want to build a knight yet, because I don't have any aggression cards or anything, so I'm just going to raise the population for one food less. He's going to yoink alchemy, which is smart. Printing press, not as smart. I'm not sure when he's going to get the rocks to build a printing press on top of upgrading his alchemy labs. Okay, so now I have nothing to do with politics. I am going to think. Oh, yeah, I could have taken Columbus, I guess, because he lets you colonize a colony for free and could have colonized one of the colonies I threw away. Since I threw them away, there's not much point in that. What I'm going to do is just uh, take care of my food. I'm going to take irrigation, research it, upgrade a farm. And I could take reserves, but I'm going to actually make a bit of progress towards building this wonder. And then in the turn. A good thing to keep in mind is that when in doubt, it's not a bad idea to just take care of something that you have to take care of at some point. Because basically, like, I need to build that wonder at some point. And so it's always exciting to take a yellow card or some nifty blue card or something that you could just do stuff with. But any time that you don't do a thing that you are definitely planning to do later, you're essentially passing the buck and making yourself have to take care of that thing further on down the line, which, you know, can cause you problems. Okay, I'll play this. It's going to be worth free science later. It's a pretty safe event. We get a free population. Cool. So one thing about St. Peter's is tricky is you do need six rocks for the middle stage. It can be difficult to get that many rocks because the main way to not be corrupt is to spend rocks. And right now, if I buy food, I'm going to be still one blue pip short of being able to avoid corruption. So it's actually a little bit awkward here for me to spend three blue pips without spending any of my actual resources that I'm trying to save up. Maybe I should have taken the reserves. So I could have actually, like had the reserves stored up and been able to do it. Hmm. What I'm going to do is a bit of a weird play. I'm going to actually make a fourth mine. So it'll take me up to six next turn, and then I'm going to raise population to stop the corruption. Uh, I'm not going to research knights yet, but I will pick up alchemy. And I'll pick up rich land. This is a decent... Oh, yeah. Hang on a second. Um, so iron. I told you that was a card to watch out for. And there's only one more iron. So if I don't take it now, I'm never going to get it. So there's definitely an idea of taking iron here, but because I built a fourth mine, the iron is a little bit less valuable, so I might wait and just try to either ride the game out on four mines, which you can do, or get coal in H2. So we'll take rich land to pay for my upgrade from farm to irrigation, 
And there's some consideration to playing this tactic, even though it is less than this one, it requires one fewer unit, which sometimes that flexibility is nice. But here, I don't think I need to worry about that. So I'm just going to pass. There was also a possibility for me to take uh, Genghis Khan, but there's a particular combo that I'm kind of glad showed up this game because I think it's one that's worth looking out for in the base game, which we'll see if my opponent lets me have it. And he did. Thank you, buddy. So you take Joan of Arc, who gives a military action to uh, culture, strength for happy faces produced by temples, and she can see the next coming up event. But I am very happy to take Michelangelo here. Should I take, should I play this thing? I should, yes. So two rocks, that's perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and take Michelangelo, play him, and then with those two rocks, I just got finished building this St. Peter's Basilica. So this combo is really, really strong. Michelangelo gives you an extra culture for each happy face produced by an urban building and a wonder. So right now he's making three cultures, sorry, four culture per turn. Because if you get Hanging Gardens and St. Peter's Basilica, it's four happy faces. So that's four for Michelangelo, plus another three from these wonders themselves. So that's seven culture per turn. That's like a lot of culture in the early game. And if you can just hang on militarily, then you can get a really, really big lead with that. Now here at this point, I'm whomping my opponent on culture. I'm a bit behind on rocks. Food, I'm gonna catch up once I play this rich land. And then science were the same. Happy faces, my opponent is in really bad shape with those and doesn't have any way of fixing them unless she takes the bread and circuses. We'll see if she does that or not. So once I research these knights and make a knight, I am gonna be actually ahead on strength which is fantastic. And then I'll be able to potentially crush my opponent. All right, so y'all get some food. She's making another temple for some more strength. It's very cute. She's upgrading a mine. Getting ahead on strength. All right, good for you. And she's gonna take this bread and circus to potentially uh, try to deal with her happy faces. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm not gonna play any events. If you don't know what's in the deck, actually, I do know what's in the deck. Wow, these are all cards I played. Hmm, I could try to actually screw her over with a Rebellion. I'm going to do that, actually. So I don't care about this. I plan to never have any colonies, but that gives me two points. And then there's the Rebellion. Perfect. So she loses half of her civil actions. Sucks to be you. Okay, so I'm going to grab the Swordsman because I want to be able to meet my H2 tactics. I will now think. So since I know these events are all safe, I could just sneak in Alchemy and rich land up oh hang on i can't rich land right now because that would make me corrupt so i guess i could either increase my population or just deal with the corruption or upgrade this paying these last two rocks now let's go ahead and increase the population now and just kind of do rich land next turn so the idea is that if you don't know what's in the deck and you know and then it's it's unless there's like an event that you really want to see it's not a bad idea to just not play events because you some of the events that you can get hit by are pretty devastating. In this particular case, I've got a defense card. So I knew even without drawing this four that I could defend against anything she could try to do against me. And my baby's waking up. So we're gonna go ahead and take a quick pause here and continue the game in, from your perspective, just a moment. From my perspective, who knows when. Okay, let's continue. So now that we're in H2, I guess I should go through and talk about some of the important cards in the second age. There are quite a few, I think. So first of all, our colon selective breeding, the mining and food technology. Selective breeding can become really crucial if you missed out on irrigation in age one. And coal, if you go on Board Game Geek, a lot of people poo-poo this card and say it's terrible, but I think that's not necessarily um, correct. I mean, yes, a lot of the times you don't actually want to make coal. You can get through the game just on bronze mines and taking lots of yellow cards and obviously if you have iron from age one you don't need coal but if you manage to upgrade your bronze mines to coal and are making nine rocks a turn that is a lot of rocks and a lot of games that i've lost to a comeback were because the person i was playing against had so many rocks that i just simply there was just nothing i could do to beat them because anything i did they could do the same or better because they had as many or more rocks as me so coal is not to be un underestimated um happy face cards 
At some point, you've got to do something about happy faces, and there are a number of different roads to go down, but these cards are pretty important. The temple version, which gives you a culture and three happy faces, and the arena version, which gives you three happy faces and two strength. Because in age three, in a two-player game, there's only one copy of a professional sports. So if you get to age three and you haven't dealt with your happy face issue, either by building St. Peter's Basilica, or by building these or by building a bunch of wonders that give happy faces, or by getting a bunch of colonies that give you yellow tokens, unless you don't need happy faces. But like, if you haven't dealt with happy faces in some fashion, then it can be really difficult in age three, so you have to keep an eye on that in age two. Scientific method, obviously science is great for the same reason alchemy is great. And then we've got journalism and opera. These are really expensive cards. They are worth eight rocks. I mean, pretty much all of the, except for the arena and the temple, um, age two urban buildings are worth eight rocks, which is really, really expensive. But these are worth a lot of culture. In the case of journalism, it's culture and science. So if you can sneak that in without falling f too far behind on strength, it can put you in a really good position. The blue technologies are also pretty much all good. Um, architecture gives you a discount of two rocks on age two and up buildings. It lets you build three stages of a wonder for a single action. Justicism, you get a uh, civil action and three blue tokens, making it easier to not go corrupt. Strategy is often a huge one with three strength and two military actions, and navigation with a two strength and colonizing. If there's colonies in the deck, that plus three colonizing bonus can be huge. So you got to watch out for these blues because they can be significant. On the military front, as I believe I've mentioned, Riflemen, there's only one of in a two-player game, and in age three, there's only one of each of the technologies, which means that if you can snipe the Riflemen and the Modern Infantry, then in age three, your opponent has no way of having an H2 or higher infantry tactic or infantry unit, which turns off a lot of tactics. Now on the government front, it's kind of weird. You got Republic here, which is a very cheap revolution cost, but aside from that, it's pretty bad. It's seven civil actions. Obviously that's good, but only two military actions, same as despotism. You really have to pair that with a leader that gives a military action or a strategy, or else you're going to be hurting for military actions in the late part of the game. The big card is Kanman, Constitutional Monarchy. With six actions and four military actions, it's a nice balance, and it's a very, very good government, often highly contested. Then, on the Leaders and Wonders front, unlike in Age 1, where the leaders are all pretty specific, there are definitely some leaders to keep an eye on in Age 2. So, Napoleon gives you plus two strength for each different type of military unit. That can be up to eight in Age 3, or up to six during Age 2. Even if you just have, like, say, infantry and knights, it's plus four strength. That's quite a big difference. Especially if you think about it like either you take them or your opponent takes them. That's not a difference of just four strength. That's like a difference of eight strength for just a leader. And that's really, really large. Isaac Newton gives you your civil action back when you research a tech. And a bonus to science equal to the highest level of your best lab or library. That can be kind of a big deal, especially if you're hurting for civil actions. Um... You should keep an eye on Maximilian Robespierre. He lets you uh, spend all of his military, all your military actions instead of civil actions to do a revolution. So you can get a really cheap, high quality government and that can be a big deal. And then Bach and Shakespeare, they're your culture guys. I'm not gonna read through all their abilities, but if you can sneak those in and get a bunch of culture without falling too far behind militarily, that, then that can put you in good shape. So you gotta really watch out for these because they can have a pretty big impact on the game. On the Wonders front, main one to keep an eye on is the Eiffel Tower. Whopping four culture and a happy face is worth the 13 rocks in most cases, so if you can build it, it's often good to build it. The Ocean Liner service depends a lot on whether you're playing the upgraded version of the, or not the upgraded, the expanded version of the game with the updated cards. This version is really good. It's only 10 rocks, and you get a yellow token, and you get to increase your population for free once per turn without spending an action or food. So it can get you a lot of workers and solve a lot of worker problems. Kremlin and Transcontinental Railroad are much more, um, you know, specific to particular situations, so you don't necessarily have to keep an eye on those, but you may end up worrying if your opponent gets an Eiffel Tower or the Ocean Liner service. Okay, well, let's go ahead and continue the game against the easy AI, work through age two, try to build up a cultural lead without falling too far behind, and then talk about age three when we get there. So no politics means I got to skip politics, and now let's take a look at what we're going to do. So what I'm going to do here is upgrade my second lab, because that's good. I am going to grab cannon so I can turn on artillery tactics. I'm going to take this one instead of that one because this one's falling off. So now I know my opponent's not getting any artillery tactics turned on until rockets comes along in H3, which it might not even. Then I'm going to play a rich land to finally upgrade my second farm. Let's go ahead and uh, since I don't really care too much, I mean, I could take urban growth for three rocks. That may be useful if I end up trying to like sneak in a journalism, which maybe I should try to do. I do need more science. Maybe if journalism comes along, I can take that instead of raising my population. Now, the general principle is unless you have a really good reason to, it's a good idea to just do what you have to do uh, when you when you can. 
So I could just raise in population, or I could uh, research knights, commit the five science, and make a knight. That way I would go up two plus three is five strength, be ahead of my opponent. These are not strength-based events, though, so I don't actually care about them that much. Okay, so yeah, we'll just, um, yeah, let's grab urban growth. My hand is, oh, that's a rule I for, oh my god, I forgot to mention that rule. Uh, yeah, there's a really important rule, which is that, um, you, oh, I can, co oh, I'm, so I can copy a tactic, which is the military band. There's no reason for that, so I'm just going to pass the turn. Um, you cannot hold more civil cards than your hand, than, than your number of civil actions. So that's kind of a big rule I totally forgot about. Need to remember to add those into the description of that other video. Okay. So what I'm looking for here mainly is constitutional monarchy. That would be really fantastic because my uh, my government is still despotism. I have a lot of science saved up. I could, of course, take the short-term answer of just getting the Republic. That would leave me short on military actions. So I could then take strategy and hope to get the strategy later. Main problem is, though, I'm at my hand limit. So I cannot actually pick up any cards. Um, shoot. That's bad. Um, what can I do? Well, I can't take the Republic unless I either urban growth, but all I can urban growth is a temple. I guess I could do that just to get it out of my hand. All right, we'll do that. I mean, I could also research knights. If I research knights, I'm obviously not going to have enough science to get the uh, Republic. Uh, okay. So, yeah. It's urban growth to make a temple. Take the Republic. Research it. Grab strategy because I'm going to want the military actions later. If there were science, I could I would take it. I could get the scientific method just to up my labs a bit, but at this point what I'm going to do is actually just build another lab, because the Republic lets me build three urban buildings of the same type, so I'm going to go ahead and just do that. Um, besides that, I've already got a lot of science that I want to spend, especially now that I picked up this. This is actually a pretty important tactic, because it's a lot of strength, and you can do it with just knights and swordsmen from age one. So I've got stuff I want to spend my science on. Let's just go ahead and raise population to spend that food. Um, and think if i just pass the turn here i'm gonna have to throw away two defense cards to keep this tactic so i'm gonna just play this tactic and then satisfy myself with throwing away a defense card which is sad but uh, i'm gonna do it so now if she attacks me i don't have to throw away a good defense card to block it oh man she's just throwing away all the all the events in there not attacking me okay so she gets the rifleman which is a good play because otherwise she was not going to be able to turn on any kind of tactics and so now if she picks up cavalrymen, she will be able to steal my classic army. Is this the first or second cavalryman is the question. That's something you want to keep an eye on is like how many cards are there in the deck of each type. Uh, there are other cavalrymen. So even if I snipe these, she'll still be able to take the other one down the road, which is a shame. But now that I'm seven strength behind, I could still block with two defense cards if she does attack me. Hmm, you know what? I am Michelangelo, so let's go ahead and build the Eiffel Tower. It's, re gosh, it's really greedy to do this. I'm already way ahead on culture. But I'll, but six of this culture is from Michelangelo, who is going to have to go away. So, I think five plus four is nine. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do the Eiffel Tower. Let's research strategy. I could take a journalism, but I'm okay with my science for the moment. And I think instead what I'd like to do is get wave and, wave and nationalism. If you're behind on strength, you get six rocks for building units. So that's good. We'll take the engineering genius to help build the Eiffel Tower. And what I'd like to do now is just avoid corruption. So if I build one stage, I'm almost there. If I, re if I get a worker, I'm almost there. And now I need ten more rocks to finish the wonder. I'm going to get three plus four is seven. Seven plus four is eleven. So I'll get there. So next turn, what am I doing? I'm going to be just building military units with Wave of Nationalism. I'm going to build a couple of knights. So I'm going to research the knights now. Now, a reasonable option would be to take Opera in case I need it for the future. But with the Eiffel Tower, I don't think I'm actually going to need the Opera. Because this is basically an Opera that doesn't take a worker or cost science. Oh, I didn't talk about this. Michelangelo's benefit is that, um, oh, that's interesting, is that uh, he does not have to pay extra civil actions when taking a new wonder. So normally it would have cost me three civil actions to take the Eiffel Tower. One plus the two I wonders I already built, but he just, you know, takes the one. And if you're playing with the expansion, he also gives you a rock when you pick up a wonder. I guess somebody thought he was underpowered. Okay, so we've got a vast territory, a really great colony. Am I willing to blow everything on it? Let's think. If I just have two knights, 
which is what I'll be able to afford with my wave of nationalism. That'll be two, four, plus three, seven strength. Yeah, I think it's worth it to just throw the whole caboodle at this. I'll keep one defense card. Oh, the opponent actually passed. Well, that's very stupid. She should have definitely been... Wait, what? Why is it? Hold on a second. What, what just happened? Oh, right. I, I'm sorry. I bid my maximum bid. I should have just built it bid incrementally. I might have been able to get away with less than eight. The, the advantage of build, bidding what your maximum is, is that um, if your opponent says the max your maximum before you do, you can't actually bid your maximum since every bid has to exceed the previous bid. So I robbed her of the chance of saying eight first, but that probably wasn't what would have happened. So that was maybe a slight mistake. Okay, my opponent did not take these cavalrymen. They're going to fall off. So what I'm going to do on my turn... Well, let's, let's not get ahead of ourselves. I am going to pick up these cavalrymen to stop my opponent from being able to get uh, the classic army that I eventually plan to use. Okay, so there's no reason to play an event here. I don't know what this thing is. And I, there's this thing I put in, which would make me lose a colony potentially if I don't get ahead on strength soon. So I'm going to just skip politics. And... I will finish the Eiffel Tower to get a zillion culture. I'm going to play Wave of Nationalism so I can make a couple of knights. And I sadly cannot make a worker. Um, if I were... Oh, you know, if I, if I had not researched knights, I could have gotten the Cavalryman. Well, anyway, I'll take the Cavalryman. And I should think about coal. I could potentially get coal. It's a bit late for that. Nah, I can think about Isaac Newton. Um... But my opponent took a leader, so he can't take any more leaders. I think, as cool as Esk Newton is, one of his main abilities is the fact that he saves you civil actions. Because when you get a civil action back when you research attack. I've got Republic for seven civil actions. It's like a lot of actions. So I'm going to wait for Napoleon for that sweet, sweet bonus strength. It'll be an extra plus four strength. And then maybe even I'll take James Cook, who gives you bonus culture for every colony you have. and makes it easier to colonize new colonies. But there's no rush on that. These can't get sniped because my opponent already committed to Robespierre, who, um, if I take the constitutional monarchy, he's going to be left just waiting till age three for a government. Okay, so what am I actually doing for my turn then? Well, I can re get, get my last worker here. It's good to get this guy out because he's going to go away once we get to age three, which is going to happen before my next turn. You can think of it like every turn, a minimum of three cards get pulled from the deck in a two-player game. So it's going to go down to at least two on my opponent's turn, and then it's going to have to get cleared out on my turn. With my last two actions, I'm actually going to research Swordsman, because the Swordsmen are going to go away when we hit H3. So I'm going to research that just to get it out, and then I'll take the Reserves, because I have a lot of actions, but very few rocks. Even with my fourth mine, this is pretty low rock production. It's look, It looks like that's what I'm going to do just to get to the end of the game. So picking up yellow cards for rocks is always going to be pretty important. Oh yeah, so Barbarians, I don't want to hit that event. It's going to get me. Uh, my opponent wins the tie, so I'm the weakest player, and I have the most points. So I'm going to lose the population. Luckily, I have a lot of population, so it is not as bad of a thing as it could be. The AI often does this, by the way, just builds a lot of the same unit. And usually you can get ahead of them. Uh, this is actually kind of annoying because uh, I know that Independence Declaration is in here, and I'm about to lose this colony. So let's take a look here. I definitely don't want to play an event because I could trigger that. I can play reserves and make two swordsmen, which gets me ahead of my opponent, which is fantastic. Um, and I should think about sniping that Kanmon. Yeah, I'm going to snipe this. I'm going to hate draft it for my opponent because he would love to pick it up and research it for six science and get out of this civil action jam that he's in. Um, so do I want to push the military more or do I want to push some culture? I'm getting eight a turn to my opponent's three. I'm already at like more than double my opponent's score. Yeah, I think that um, culture I should be fine. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab Napoleon to get ahead of my opponent, really start to actually pressure him. We'll take this because I might want to upgrade my alchemies into the labs in age three. We'll then, let's see, this would give me three science, but I have nothing then good to do with my last civil action. This, I have to pay an action, to, to, but it gives me four science. I think it's worth it because... It's one more science, and I have zillions of actions. Okay, so now we're in H3. Uh, let's let the opponent do their turn, and then we'll talk about some H3 cards. 
Okay, so he loses no colonies. Luckily, though, I don't lose a colony, so that's good. Okay, so he's building an arena to improve his happy faces, because he was he was facing an uprising. And that's pretty much all he did. Okay, so age three. Lots of important stuff here. In age three, computers is a really important card. It's the highest level lab. It makes a whopping five science. And the reason it's important is that a bunch of the age three leaders, half of them, really rely on science. So Sid Meier is phenomenal. Each of your labs produces culture equal to its level. So if you have three computers, it's nine culture a turn. It's just ridiculous. Bill Gates, each of your labs produces rocks equal to its level. And at the end of the game, he basically gets points like Sid Meier. So he gets Sid Meier's bonus just once per game. But also during the game, uh, his labs make a ridiculous number of rocks. So you can completely fix any rock problems if you have Bill Gates. And then there's Einstein, who's like Newton. He gives you a, a bonus science equal to the level of your highest lab or library. And every time you research a tech, you get three culture. This can be a lot of culture. Because if you have a lot of civil actions and a bunch of science, like a bunch of excess science, you can start researching junky technologies just for points. And beyond that, you can get points in a few different ways. Space flight is a, is a very popular wonder because you get one culture per level of each tech you've researched. And that's pretty much always going to be good for everybody. And they can be phenomenal if you've researched out of your way with Einstein. The other big wonder is fast food chains. It just gives you, I mean, like uh, one point for every worker, except for two points for workers that are on farms or mines. It's hard to get a really huge payoff with this, but it's very difficult to get a bad one. This is almost always a good wonder. So these are just point generating wonders. Hollywood and internet also give points and they can also worth, be worth a lot of points, but they are much more specialized. So they're often not as important to keep an eye on. Besides this, democracy is a big card. It's expensive, but you get three culture per turn seven actions and three military actions so it's you know a really really good wonder um apart from the government cards i would say the other main things to keep an eye on the blue cards are just like an h2 they're very fantastic they're very strong um but air forces so what air forces does is in addition to giving you the five strength typical of h3 units um it lets you count each air force lets you count again the tactic bonus from an army so if i built an air force right now it would actually be worth 13 strength five for the air force itself and then another uh eight for my classic army if i built a second air force that would only be worth five strength unless of course i had four more units making another classic army which is not likely but getting a big strength advantage is important because a lot of the cards are war over culture so the way wars work is which i should have explained in my rules video is that it's not resolved immediately the way that an aggression is it's resolved at the beginning of your next turn and at that point, you do what the text says. So I declare a war over culture on my opponent at the beginning of my next turn. Whoever wins the war steals five culture plus one culture equal to the strength advantage. So you can actually lose a war that you start, which is always funny when it happens. But this is a really huge swing because if I am, let's say, 10 strength ahead of my opponent, I'm going to steal 15 strength from them, which is like a 30 point swing in a two player game. So it's a really huge amount of culture. And for that reason, being ahead culturally is pretty important. So here I'm definitely going to, well, let's see, should I try to squeeze out some defense cards by playing this armed intervention? Um, let's see my opponent. If he has one age three defense card, six, seven, eight, he could block it. If he has an H2 defense card, four, five, six, he can't. But I don't really care that much about stealing his defense cards. I want to get cool events, and this is a very strong event. It's a six-point swing and gaining population versus losing population. So it's really good to be the strongest person on that one, and it's about to turn over. So I'm going to just pop that in there. Ah, it's another colony. Great. All right, I'll bid a little bit on this. We'll see if my opponent actually wants to fight me for it. Okay, we'll beat you by a bit. Okay, he's going for it. Let's go up to seven. Aha. All right, so for the low, low price of one unit and two defense cards, which I don't need because I'm high strength, I'm going to get that colony for four bonus strength and a bunch of cards. Sadly, I didn't draw any wars, but I could potentially do better than my classic army. I could uh, get this. Now, keep in mind, my knights would make this obsolete because they're from age one. But if I upgrade the one of the knights to cavalry and make two cannons... I would get this, which is only three units for 10 strength instead of the four units for eight that I currently have rolling. So I'm going to go for that. We'll grab this. Sid is interesting. He would give me three culture per turn. I would have to hope that computers comes up soon. But if computers doesn't come up soon, it would kind of suck because he wouldn't really do that much. So I'm going to not take him. 
Um, besides that, I'm doing well on culture. I mean, I'm just completely smashing my opponent here. So let's go ahead and start the ball rolling on this. We'll do that. Make a cannon. This gives me an extra two strength from Napoleon as being a new military unit. Uh, we'll take a revolutionary idea because I could use some more science. I guess I could play my old revolutionary idea. And we'll take Engineering Genius. I can't get fast food chains anymore. It's going to fall off even if my opponent doesn't take it. But Space Flight, I could potentially take it. Looks like it's not that much right now. But if I research a few H3 techs, it'll be 19 points. And that's going to be worth building. So now we end the turn. We have to throw a bunch of these cards. Uh, the Territory, I don't care about. Crime Wave is not a super big deal. I'm not going to make two cannons for a tactic. I am not going to do that for a tactic because it's just worse than the other one. This, uh, I'd have to get Riflemen or the, well, basically the Modern Infantry, which is unlikely. So having thrown away all that stuff, I got a lot of armed interventions. Uh, let's see what we get. There's a war. Okay, perfect. So once I get my tactic online, we'll do our best to steal a whole bunch. He actually just passed. Oh, great. Well, I don't actually need this unit anymore because I'm going to be using Knight and uh, two Horsies. So, sure, I'll take six rocks and three blue tokens for free. Thank you very much. Uh, he's going for the fast food chains, which is smart. It's it's a common mistake to underutilize the age three wonders. They can really be worth a lot of points. For me, Hollywood and Internet are total junk, but space flight and the fast food chains can be quite a bit. Okay, I'm not going to declare the war just yet. I don't have any events to play. Maybe I should have had an event just to play it for points. So that could have been a slight mistake. We'll put the space light under construction. It does cost four civil actions to do that, but I have seven, so I still have some wiggle room. Let's now research the cavalrymen. Upgrade a couple of them. Um, put down this tactic. It doesn't mean I'm drawing fewer cards. I could wait, but now let's get this. Let's get this going. Oops, that's the wrong thing. Hang on. I only need to upgrade one. Oh, crap. I need to, I need a new worker and I'm one food shy of getting a new worker. Okay. Let's back that up a bit. Hmm. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'll still research this. We'll upgrade one. I only need to upgrade one. I'm still ahead of him in case there's any bad events in there. I am going to grab just both of these reserves because I could use the rocks. I have a lot of rocks though. Hmm. Do I really need to upgrade, take those reserves? <sighs> I mean, I'm going to be corrupt, which is annoying. I can't really do much about that. So what I could do is play like revolutionary idea just to get it out of my hand. No, let's take the reserves. We can use them. So we'll lose a couple of resources here to corruption. I do plan to play this tactic card at some point. I should actually do that now because there's no reason not to since I'm not since I gave up my stuff for colonies that my opponent stupidly put in there. Let's get rid of that. I don't need all these armed interventions. So next turn we'll probably declare the war and build the air force. Oh my god, this is insane. The person just getting non-stop colonies. Um yeah, I don't want I don't need this other knight. So we'll just bid. See if the opponent can outbid my defense card spending. All right, I'm going to pass. I'm not going to go crazy with it. Let him throw units, two units away to get the colony. He does have 12 rocks, so he'll be able to get the units back if he can get enough food, which he can. He can make two guys and build back those two things. But he chose to instead spend his rocks building the wonder, so he got a bunch of points. He's still behind me. This is the easy AI after all. One thing to watch out for is Gandhi. Gandhi makes it more difficult for your opponents to play aggressions and wars. So unless you have a zillion military actions, which I don't because my, my government gives me very few, uh, this can completely block you out of aggressing on your opponent. So in fact, I am actually just going to play the War of Culture right now. See if we can find a way to make this work. So I need two workers. One, let's get some food. Two, I research the Air Force. I build an Air Force. And I build a cannon. Oh, I'm one shy. Okay, no problem. Well, we'll just get some more rocks, build that cannon, and we're up to 49 strength. Good times. So now, I suppose we'll get some more reserves. I can get Bill Gates for three rocks a turn. That doesn't seem quite worth it. Patriotism, I'm already done making my military units. So we'll just, I guess, play this revolutionary idea for science and pass the turn. Um, 
Impact of population. I am behind on that, so we'll throw that one away. I don't think I'm going to catch up. Two military cards. Okay, we'll throw away one of these plunders. I don't think I'm ever going to play both of them. So I don't draw any new cards because I spent everything. I spent three military actions on the war and then two military actions making two units. So I was just barely getting there. Okay, he's passing. I don't actually need this knight. It's only two strengths. So I'm going to bid for that to get five science, two yellow pips, and two blue pips. That's very convenient. He does play Gandhi one turn too late for him. So this war is still happening. And he managed to build up stuff. So I'm so this is, what, 24 point difference? So I'm stealing 29 points of culture from him. Yep. And that's a 58 point swing. So you can see that a war over culture can be a very big deal. Okay. So now... There's no rush to play this impact of technology, although it would be nice to get these refugees. Hmm, would that screw my opponent? Yeah, my opponent would have to destroy a built building once once those refugees popped. Um, I could get through a plunder and steal some rocks. How important is it to steal rocks from my opponent? I could steal seven rocks and or food. Um, that would give me a lot of rocks. Yeah, there's no rush on the event. Let's just do this. So it takes up most of my military actions because it takes three extra military actions to do an aggression against Gandhi. We'll take it all in rocks. Let's go ahead and uh, build a movie. I think it's getting a little late for the computers. So movies is like an Eiffel Tower, basically. We'll do that. Build a movie for an extra four culture per turn. Besides that, what am I doing with my life here? Um, I guess we'll just take civil service and research it. For a bunch of blue tokens and two extra civil actions. And I do have the space flight, which is now looking quite hale and hearty. I guess um, getting some junky text just to research them. Let's see, I have 11 science. I'm not going to be able to research that many. You know, I think for my last two actions, we'll just build the first couple of stages of the wonder. So I don't have to worry about having actions to finish it later on. Hey, there's another war. I don't have enough military actions to declare it, sadly. He's going to get the internet. How much is that going to give him? I don't think it's going to be too much. Internet is basically one culture per culture, science, and strength that your urban buildings provide. Oops, that's the wrong wonder. What do we got over here for internet? It's going to be 12 points. Okay, I'm not super worried about that. So here, can't declare war in the last round. It is the last round of the game because I'm the first player and the age three deck ran out of my turn. Don't have enough military actions for this, so we're going to play our Impact of Technology. It will score an event that was placed here. Government. Well, I got lots of civil actions, so that is good. So I'm beat my opponent on that. All right, so this turn we definitely have to finish building the space flight. I need 13 rocks to do that. Luckily, I'm just going to get there. I wish I could say I planned that, but I didn't because I'm not very good. So we're going to build one stage for four, and now the engineering genius would let me build the final stage. Can I research anything? Uh, yes, I can research something. So Einstein would give me three culture for researching one thing. Chaplin doubles the culture production of your best theater. The happy faces I can't really use, but that's four culture because I have a movie. So we're going to get him... And then I guess we'll get a blue technology because those there's like an event that gives you points for blue technologies in case the opponent puts specifically that in there. Engineering Genius, the last stage for 24 culture. And the last, there's nothing good to do with it at all. So I'm just going to end the turn. And I doubt there's much my opponent can really do that's super useful on his last turn. He doesn't actually have the ability to beat or to finish the internet. Happiness is for happy faces. We both get the maximum 16 point for that one. What is he going to do? He's going to make a multimedia and upgrade a printing press? Nope, just researched it for the sake of researching it, which will give him four points for the impact of technology event that I put in. Okay, so now at the end of the game, we score all of the age three event deck uh, cards in the event deck that were not scored, that did not come up during the game, so they all come out now. Vlada Kvadl, the designer of this game, is known for being a little bit of a point salad designer a lot of his games at the end have that sort of a thing and there we go that's how you can keep your eye on some of the most important things in a game of through the ages and trounce someone who has absolutely no idea what they're doing hope you enjoyed it please like and or subscribe and i'll see you again soon take care